The most haunted team find themselves in North Wales in search of murder and mystery in an attempt to solve the unsolvable. and welcome to another Most Haunted Midsummer Murders. One thing I love about this programme is you never know where you're going to end up. Midsummer Murders finds the Most Haunted Investigation team with a specific task, to attempt to uncover the truth behind some ancient murder mysteries that time has shrouded in obscurity. We will obviously need guidance during our investigations, and who better to call on to direct us through the various locations we will visit than our historian Leslie Smith. I joined Leslie and asked her where we would be investigating and what the murder mystery was. I love this part, because this is the part where you surprise me and tell me whether, whether I'm going to get cold, wet, absolutely scared to death and really tired. What's happening this time? I think you might be getting all of those, but in a different way from before. I'm going to send you to step over the Red Dragon into Merlin's country. You're going to go into beautiful northern Wales to Ruthin. And when you get to Ruthin, I want you, first of all, to go to the library. Now, that wasn't always a library. The building was actually a courthouse. And this case is based on very, very early um, 20th century, in fact, 1903 and just slightly before. However, this man decided he was going to clear off, leave his wife and child, and he was arrested for abandonment, hadn't paid up, keep off them, and he was sent to jail. While he was in jail, the wife still had to cope, so she took in the lodger. It seems that while he was in jail, uh, William Hughes was going slightly berserk, wondering if she had, in fact, taken this man as a lover. He didn't know. He came out of jail when he'd served his course, went back home to the wife, and there was a shooting, and the wife was shot dead. After that, he was arrested, tried, found guilty, and was sent to jail, where you will go too. And he was hung in his cell. And the great mystery of this is, of course, because there still is a mystery, although he was tried and found guilty, was it actually him who killed the wife? Was he attempting to shoot the lodger? Was he jealous of the lodger? How was the lodger involved in this case? Nobody seems to think there's any other outside influences, but there's been this sort of swing of doubt about this. And it's that talk, if you like, in the Overethin that gives people um, to come forward and say, come on, can we have a bit more information about this mystery? It's certainly something to get our teeth into. Well, I'm looking at your face and I'm picking up on the atmosphere already and it's something, this is the first one I think I'm not really looking forward to at all. No, I think it's going to be very sobering indeed and lives are involved here. This isn't a game. So I wonder what you'll find and I should be thinking of you. Just ring me. Hold on. Ruthin sits quietly on a red sandstone hill overlooking the River Clwyd. It has over 700 years of recorded history and its streets have been trodden by kings, queens, princes and commoners alike. Its buildings reflect an eclectic mix of architectural styles, from medieval castle through Tudor homes to Georgian townhouses, giving it an air of a time long past set in resplendent countryside which all combines to make it an attractive and enchanting place, but with its own secrets to hide from the inquisitive outsider. A vet gathered parapsychologist Dr. Kieran O'Keefe and medium David Wells and began the investigation with an initial walk around the centre of Ruthin. This is a beautiful village, isn't it, it guys? Is Absolutely Gorgeous. stunning. Now, the main centre of the village is back there. We've come mm. down a quiet road. It's a very, very busy place, isn't it? Mm. Hustle and bustle all the time. You know, cars flying past yeah. and, and lorries as well. So it's, it's a very sort of... Uh, People are working here all the time. 
But you look at the buildings and it's, it's like you've stepped back in time, haven't mm. you? So, David, how, how will this help us start our investigation? Well, I think it gives you a feel for the place. I mean, as we came down through there, it felt very um, busy in my world. Yeah. It felt bu busy as in uh, trading. It felt very much like a market town. Much more open as well. And we're very high up, so that's, that sense, I mean, that's logical to me, says it's defensive. Right. Because you're high up, you can, you know. Right. So there's been a lot of turmoil, and up there there seemed to be a cloud hanging around. Mm -hmm. It seemed to be quite dark. The energy felt very thick. It was a town square, so, you know, also say, it's, I guess it's a meeting place for people. If there's any kind of hassle or any kind of major decision to be made, that's where it happens, isn't it? But what about the starting point? We need a mystery. We, mm -hmm. we, you know, we've got a murder. How are you going to begin? I mean, how on earth are you going to start picking away the layers? It's very difficult because there would have been a lot of murders. There would have been, well, certainly a lot of death in this place. So it might be one of these occasions when I need a bit of a clue. A clue? Yeah, okay. or just a, a, a starting point. I mean, I reckon the middle of the village is the starting point, but then maybe just a little bit of a... A nudge. All right. Well, I tell you what, we'll walk round and we'll mm -hmm. go back to the centre. Okay. And I might give you a little bit of a clue, depending on Thank how you. generous <laughs> me and Kieran are feeling. Okay. You look at this. It's gorgeous. Wow, and look at this house here. It's so rich. Well, here we are. We're right in the centre of Ruthin. Can you pick up? I know it's a ridiculous thing. <laughs> Going through time, yeah. there must have been, you know, obviously we're looking for a murder to solve the mystery of the murder. There's going to be lots, hundreds and hundreds of murders mm. that would have been committed throughout the years. In my mind's eye, it's more concentrated over this side. This side still seems a little bit quieter oh, really? in my mind's eye. Um, but I can still hear a lot of noise, a lot of hustle and bustle, and a, a, a lot of trading. Um, but I can also over here hear a lot of shouting i can hear a lot of angry voices oh, really? over here as associated well associated with what it seems i mean I can, I can read there it says the old courthouse yes. you know, i can see that um so i'm just wondering if it's something to do with that obviously wherever there was judgments there would have been people who agreed disagreed there'd have been hang him don't hang him all of that it's kind of that's what i'm sensing over there do you want us to point you in the right direction a little bit more would be useful i think what do you think kieran I think, yeah, I think we should give him a clue. I think we should maybe focus on the nature of the murder, okay. who the victim was. Well, the nature of the murder is um, a gentleman who was imprisoned for supposedly murdering his wife. Okay, so we're looking for a domestic murder. A domestic murder, but there is a mystery surrounding it, and that's what we want to get to the crux of. I would like to go over this way because it seems more concentrated yeah, you over said there, that. Yeah. definitely. All right, well, let's um, head okay. over in this way. Let's head, head over. What are you getting? Because you mentioned the old courthouse over mm. there. We can see it from here. Mm -hmm. What sort of things are you picking up from there? I'm getting a feeling of, of this public space being used. I know there's a clue there and it says the courthouse. I want to be outside the courthouse. So I guess what's happened here is um, when judgments have been made, people would have gathered outside. They would have all wanted to have their aura. I mean, especially things like local murders, that, what we're looking for, those sorts of things. But I'm not, I'm not drawn to that with regards to our murder. I want to I wanna go further beyond that. Oh. You I want to go you further mean back. In time? No, it's a different building. You mean behind it? Yeah. There right. may be a different space in time. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm... This is really early. I want to go out the village and probably a couple more inside the village. But I do also want to go out... out or feel as if I'm drawn outside well, the village. Let's, well, let's go over there, yeah, Kieran? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I was hardened that David had dismissed the Tudor courthouse as being unconnected with the mystery at hand and was pleased by his need to explore further afield as this is where I believed the story lies. Okay, this is as far back as the library goes. Okay. Okay. Anything spring to mind? Yeah, th this feels this feels much better for what we're after. I've got uh, two things. One is the name William, his first name, and I can see him wearing a very simple shirt and trousers. 1900, early 1900. He is um, 
Yeah, but uh, it's really odd because I can feel him here, but I can also feel a stronger energy underneath us, underneath the ground. Obviously, we're in a library. Was this always a library? No, it feels like a courtroom. This is the courtroom we're looking nice. for. Okay. It definitely feels like a courtroom.